Please welcome to the stage Vice President and General Manager of Cloud, Enterprise, and Government Segment Sales, Intel Sales, and Marketing Group, Intel, Kit Ho Chi. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us this morning. In this session, we'll share uh, innovations from both Intel and Oracle on how we deliver value to the enterprise. At the end of this session, you may want to know that we'll be raffling three $500 gift cards, so please stay till the end. Um, in addition to me speaking, you'll also hear from actual enterprise customers who have deployed and are in, in use of the solutions that we'll speak about as well. A brief flashback to over 5,000 years ago. Um, I don't know how many of you in this audience know what, what's the picture behind me, but um, there is a major difference between the human species and all other species on this planet. We have learned um, how to pass massive amounts of data and information through generations by means other than our genes. The picture behind me is a Mesopotamian pictogram, one of the earliest tools humans used to store and share information. It is believed that writing originated as a system of accounting. Interestingly, for those of you who like beer, beer was also very popular as a beverage back in the Mesopotamian civilization that's over 5,000 years ago. Many of the earliest surviving records have to do with the sale of beer. With pictographs like the one behind me, one could tell how many jars of beer were involved in each transaction. So there you have it, an early day ERP system to track beer sales. Fast forward to today, pace at which we create, share, and extract insights from data is tremendous, and it is accelerating. It amazes me that half of the world's data was created in the last two years. And by next year, 1.7 megabytes of data will be generated by each of us in this room and people around the world every second. But it's not just people who are generating data. By next year, approximately 200 billion machines and sensors will be deployed across many industrial applications and will continue and contribute to the influx of data. The world is rapidly digitizing. More than 70% of global CEOs today are using technology to disrupt rather than be disrupted. Companies that have succeeded in this area do not need introduction. We're seeing these examples in many areas, including FSI, media, and healthcare. Examples we just saw often represent modernized code running on modern hardware. Now, we all know that that's not the environment we face in many enterprises. Companies need to address the ability uh, and the re reality that the data centers feature aging infrastructure and software incapable of tapping the value of data. There are many reasons why businesses are not competitive on all infrastructure. Firstly, data is often disconnected in silos, preventing the ability to gain insights from the data. Secondly, antiquated network infrastructures throttled by skyrocketing data traffic created by new connected devices. Security exploits are growing and require more resilience, hardened technologies, and the ability to have uh, analyze the security um, issues real time, which is not possible when you don't have modern IT equipment. And finally, the pace of business in terms of the deployment of services and the scalability of services require modern uh, IT infrastructure. According to the research from the Enterprise Strategy Group, the impact of outdated infrastructure on business can be significant. Companies with older infrastructure experience a 6x slower rate for product innovation and time to market. Also, according to IDC, organizations can accelerate IT transformation with a server refresh. And, and, and they note several reasons to modernize. The first obvious one is to reduce IT infrastructure costs. Costs associated with aging infrastructure, like warranties, IT staff time, downtime that can, can exceed expectations, especially after the fourth or fifth year. A service operating costs in years four to six is 10x higher than the initial acquisition cost of the server. 
The second reason is lower IT staff time and cost. A server in years uh, six onwards require much more staff time to manage as compared to year one or two. Three-year server refresh cycles can reduce time and money spent on technical provisioning, operations, and break fix activities by almost 60%, according to IDC. Improving user productivity. Productivity losses due to unplanned application outages are reduced by almost 80% over the first three years. And finally, organizations have the potential to boost profits through the fast, quick and faster deployment of services, new services, and innovative business models. Business success relies on IT information, uh, transformation. Today, there are many ways, as you guys know, to realize this transformation, and there are different paths to new infrastructure. You could choose a traditional on-prem deployment. Many of you are very familiar with this. You could opt for pub private cloud with the security, flexibility, more control um, that you may desire. You could also use public cloud for maintenance-free infrastructure and almost endless scalability. Or you could combine both, on-prem private as well as public cloud infrastructure. I'd like to show um, how Oracle's Intel-based solutions can help your business evolve, regardless of which path you choose, and how our innovations can drastically change the speed at which you create value for your organization and your customers. We've been partnering with Oracle at every layer of hardware and software for over 25 years to create innovative, scalable, and secure enterprise class solutions. Our collaboration spans multiple areas from product inception to product releases. Starting with architecture and systems design, Intel's architects work closely with Oracle developers to define and implement new features and architectural enhancements. Intel also designs custom CPUs and storage products specifically for Oracle's needs for specific workloads that many of you have placed onto the Oracle Cloud. This allows Oracle's applications to handle far more complex uh, and faster um, activation of cloud instances. With, with regards to operating environment, Intel and Oracle collaborate to make Oracle Linux and virtualization better uh, and scalable, uh, better performing and scalable on Intel platforms. Database optimization is an area where our, both our companies have had the longest history of collaboration. Oracle Database is an early adopter of many new features on the Intel Xeon processors, including support for our latest memory technology, Intel Obtain Data Center Persistent Memory. And to this, I'll talk um, later on this. This manifests in a variety of Oracle's um, product lines, uh, whether it's on the new hardware, which I'll speak to in a minute, um, best-in-class performance and security, uh, as well as the on-prem traditional deployments. We are grateful that Oracle has braced, embraced Intel's Xeon scalable processor as the foundation of data center processing. Intel is powering Oracle engineered systems like Exadata and more than 30 virtual server instances in Oracle Cloud. Let's take a quick look at our flagship data center processor. Intel's second generation Xeon scalable processor delivers new optimizations for high growth workload targets, unique optimizations for AI, inference, network functions, and groundbreaking memory um, innovation. We have worked with our ecosystem partners to deliver over 95 new records with our second generation Xeon Platinum processes. Now, of course, real business run on real work applications, not peak performance uh, of synthetic workloads. Let's hear from a leader in the banking industry who will share benefits of upgrading to the latest generation of Intel-powered Oracle Exadata. Please welcome Dr. Marcus Pretzis from Deutsche Bank to the stage. Good morning, morning Marcus. Good welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Can you share a bit about your role at Deutsche Bank? Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here today. My role at Deutsche Bank is in production integrity. Um, as chief architect, I focus on production stability, resilience, efficiency, 
um, so all the non-functional requirements of the IT environment. Can you tell us about business challenges Deutsche Bank faces when it comes to managing data and driving business insights? Mm. Ab absolutely. So as you were just saying, um, data volume and granularity is ever increasing constantly. We need to move quickly from um, reporting into insights. Our reporting, for instance, in the regulatory space moved uh, from uh, quarterly in the old days onto um, monthly, weekly, daily, and forward-looking insights, obviously, um, nowadays, right? And to address these challenges, DB wanted an appliance that has been engineered with hard and software in mind. All this sounds familiar, Marcus. Um, these are challenges that many enterprises today face. I know Deutsche Bank has considerable history with Exadata. Can you tell us about your journey and how things have progressed to, till, till this day? Yeah, sure. Um, so in 2010 already, um, we made our initial migration uh, from an IBM power system with EMC and storage attached to Exadata. We focused on our most critical applications first, and by now we've built more than 65 full Exadata racks with 37 uh, um, petabyte of storage hosting our critical applications. Um, all these Exadatas are powered by Intel uh, Platinum processors for performance and stability. So we've been able to take advantage of the continuous optimization from Oracle and Intel from X2 up to X8. We typically use um, every system, each generation of Exadata for about three to four years then to refresh to the latest technology. So what's next for Deutsche Bank? Yeah, um, now we are focusing on database consolidation for our less critical uh, systems. Our goal is to consolidate more than 3,000 databases from a number of applications onto about 20 full Exadata racks. And additionally, we formulated our um, cloud technology uh, strategy as a core part of our adoption. Um, therefore, literally last week, <laughs> we've, we've begun a POC of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, and we are testing the auton uh, autonomous data warehouse for efficiency and reducing our operational cost. That's incredible, Marcus. Thank you for coming today to share with us. Thank you very much. Looking forward to our future collaboration. Absolutely. Right. You've heard how Deutsche Bank is using Exadata on-premise, and it is running a POC currently, as of last week, uh, on Oracle's public cloud solution. Uh, this is a great segue to the next option for deploying new infrastructure, which is public cloud. Uh, benefits of public cloud are clear. You get faster time to market and obviously flexible performance and um, scalability. I would like to shine a light on Oracle's autonomous database uh, in case you missed Andy's session earlier. Oracle's autonomous data management solution in the cloud delivers automated patching, upgrades, tuning, and performs all routine database maintenance tasks uh, while the system is running without human intervention. Oracle calls this cloud self-driving, self-securing, and self-repairing. All these capabilities help to eliminate manual database management and human errors. At the foundation of Oracle's autonomous database cloud is Exadata. It uses Intel's Xeon scalable processes and solid state drives as, as its building blocks. It also uses Intel's telemetry and performance monitoring capabilities implemented in our latest Intel Xeon processes to monitor and tune its performance. And finally, it takes advantage of Intel compilers and software optimization done specifically for Oracle's database uh, and middleware. Now, please help me wel to welcome to the stage one of the many customers who have seen benefits of Oracle's autonomous cloud. Please welcome Roberto Castejon from Sky Brazil. Welcome, Roberto. Thank you. Tell us about your role at Sky. Uh, OK, well, Sky is a satellite pay TV operator in Brazil. It's the largest one. We have around 30%. I'm with Sky for the last 16 years. Uh, been through most of the IT areas. Right now, I run architecture. Thanks, Roberto. That's impressive. With such large um, a customer base, what were some of the challenges Sky Brazil faced before coming onto Autonomous? Well, um, two years back, we started our digital transformation and collecting lots of data from all our customers. And we started driving the need to get this data to the field, to the CSRs, as fast as possible. 
uh, with this, our statistical models, our churn prediction and stuff started growing, and we started to keep on investing. Fantastic. Um, with, with that, over two years, the need for speed, the need for more investment in infrastructure started hogging the, our progress. Uh, so you can say that our biggest challenge was to set up this high performance, secure data warehouse where people could tap in uh, uh, as they needed. Also, we launched a, a real-time decision program where our CSRs could get the, the best offer for their customers as soon as they called in. So that, again, not only took a lot of processing, a lot of data, but also the response time had to be real quick. Plus, we got some sort of batch processing that gets in, crunches down all the customer data for the CSRs to do retention and to do other offers, which are more in the batch process. Um, what else can I say? Well, we are a single, uh, single tier operator. We don't have telephones, cell phones, or mobile. So we have to have a real fast time to market. Our marketing strategies are always based on targeting the right customers to, to, to propose offer and to retent them. Um, what else? We, like I said, it's a day-to-day -day challenge where you have to be real fast, and that was what happened in the last two years. Can you share how Sky Brazil is transforming the data management through Oracle Autonomous uh, Cloud? Sure. Uh, we started this program one year ago. People were skeptic about the advantage of going into autonomous, um, but right off the bat, the, the, the response was great. Uh, the time-consuming tasks that we're, we had with our previous database on-prem went away. Uh, we had speed to provision and to do POCs and testings that we never had before. I would say that was the taking our infrastructure team into the digital transformation area. Before that, they were still fighting with the provisioning and the sourcing and stuff like that. Uh, so another great reason that we saw with Autonomous was that we were able to maintain the stability of four nines, which for us is critical once you have a 24 by seven operation. Something the audience may want to know, can you share both the time saving and cost savings uh, by going, going on to the autonomous cloud? Okay, first off, in terms of setting up the whole process, it took a couple of, three to four weeks to set up the whole infrastructure for the, the models, the statistical models and the campaigns, where in the normal process it would have taken around five to seven months. Uh, we did some calculations and we ended up seeing a 60% cost savings in terms of infrastructure with that. Uh, also, one thing that's pretty interesting and it wasn't expected for that we were able to put on the, on the development and the UAT instances the same strength that you have in the production environment. So that also speed up the process to generate new offers and test premises and stuff like that. So basically that 90% time, reduction in time, it was made all the difference for us. Fantastic. Those are tremendous results um, in a very short time, the three years that you mentioned and the savings that you measured. Um, what made you choose Oracle with Intel? Well, first of all, uh, we had a very comprehensive uh, agreement with Oracle with latest a four year span to evolve and, and jump into it. Second. Oracle gave us a great support in terms of technical skills to set up these processes. It's, a, it's not a steep learning curve, but it's there. And third and foremost is that we, once we went into the cloud with Intel, we saw a 300% increase in CPU performance when compared with our on-premise park. That was sort of unexpected because we weren't counting on that, so that brought us a little bit more extra savings. That's impressive. Can you share some of your future plans? Well, like I said, in the next two to three years, we're gonna continue on this path. We're gonna port around 50% of all our systems to OCI, and we expect to, to be doing the BSS, the OSS into the cloud, and for that, I, I think that ATP and ADW is gonna continue to play an important role. 
Fantastic. Thank you again, Roberto, for being with us today to share your experience Thank you. with Oracle Autonomous Cloud. Thank you. Thank you. Now we've taken a look at you know, multiple paths to deployment, whether it's on-premise and in the public cloud. We will explore Intel's new disruptive technology that supports these paths. The most disruptive feature of the recently launched um, second generation Xeon Scalable, um, which launched in April this year, is the integrated control of the Intel Optane data center persistent memory. Historically, memory and storage hierarchies relied on fast and expensive DRAM which lacks persistence. SSDs and HDDs, while cost-effective, are much slower. While larger memory tiers and, and size have been technically feasible, economic limitations capped affordable memory uh, capacity and limited memory-hungry applications. Examples of these applications are in-memory databases, big data analytics, high-capacity VM environments, and obviously real-time fraud detection. Intel obtained DC persistent memory is available in much higher capacity than DRAMs, offers extremely high performance, and is persistent. It closes the gap basically between um, the gap between DRAM and SSDs. We launched this new technology in April of this year, but ahead of our launch, we partnered to build the ecosystem represented here behind me. You will see many familiar brands representing cloud service providers, OSVs, ISVs, and OEMs who are now offering a broad range of systems supporting Intel Optane data center persistent memory. I'd like to share just a couple of examples of performance impact uh, driven by the introduction of Intel Optane data center persistent memory. Cassandra is a large distributed database that shows up in a number of different applications. You probably use it today, although you may not realize, when you're downloading maps when you're streaming movies, or when you're using instant messengers. We were able to demonstrate nine times higher read IOPS using Intel Optane data center persistent memory. This fundamentally changes performance of Cassandra. Secondly, another way we see this product being used is with virtual machines, which are widely used in cloud instances. For example, when we were able to deliver four times better VM density in Redis with Optane DC persistent memory. And of course, one of our partnerships is with Oracle. We are thrilled to preview how we've partnered to provide this new disruptive technology. Please join me in welcoming on stage Cody Umama Gassaran, Senior Vice President of Oracle Exadata Product Development. Cody, please. Good morning. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Can you please share, Cody, about Exit Data and our collaboration enabling new technologies? Hey, Kit. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, Exit Data has been very successful in the market over the last 11 years, uh, powering mission-critical deployments worldwide. Any geography you pick, any industry vertical, you'll find Exit Data well represented. That too across a wide variety of workloads, OLTP, data warehousing, IOTs, in-memory, consolidation, everything. With Exadata, we've built the world's fastest, most available, most scalable, and most cost-effective database platform that can be deployed on-premises, public cloud, or even cloud at customer. Our relentless engineering behind Exadata has led us to adopting newer technologies and we're always proactive to engineer for future needs of our customers. I'm very happy to state that Intel has been a terrific partner in this pursuit. We in Exadata Engineering have been working closely with Intel on Exadata for over a decade. Obviously, the success that I spoke to is also success for Intel. That's fantastic to hear, Cody, but um, it's an example of recent engineering collaboration between Intel and Oracle um, that you can highlight. So, of course, a terrific example of the joint engineering collaboration that we have had is how we have integrated the Intel Optane DC persistent memory right inside our Exadata storage servers. This is a capability that our CEO, Larry Ellison, will announce later today. But I can list a few highlights of our engineering innovation with Intel persistent memory. First, integrating the persistent memory technology 
inside our shared Exadata storage servers means that all the databases deployed on an Exadata get the tremendous performance, and they can automatically leverage this performance. Persistent memory now adds a very intelligent tier in our already smart storage subsystem with hot data and persistent memory, cool data in uh, NVMe flash, and cold data on disk. All of the storage tiering is fully automatic. The database server makes direct RDMA calls to persistent memory on the storage server to read hotly accessed data. And it reads this data very fast, like very, very fast, because with RDMA, we can avoid the whole overhead of network messaging, CPU interrupts, context switches, and the whole lot. And finally, I alluded to this previously, we've obtained really terrific performance numbers using persistent memory and Exadata, both in terms of boosting our IOPS and significantly reducing the latency. And these numbers can quickly add up for busy systems with a very high I.O. workload. So it begs the question, what are the performance numbers you obtained with persistent memory and Exadata? <laughs> you know, I would love to stay here, but I wouldn't want to steal Larry's thunder. Um, He'll disclose more about this uh, technology and the performance numbers in his keynote session later in the day. So all of you, please make sure that you attend that session to learn more. Uh, we're also demonstrating this technology in our autonomous showcase exhibit in Moscow East South. So if you drop by that, you can see a live demo of all of this. OK, so a quick plug. Larry's keynote is at 345 uh, at Moscone, so you guys need to go there to hear the results. Uh, but Cody, is there anything else you can tell us uh, in terms of what is unique with uh, Oracle's Exadata implementation of persistent memory. The most beautiful aspect of this technology that we're really proud of is that the adoption is absolutely painless for Exadata customers. We have done all the hard work such that applications don't need to change. Data models don't have to change. No system tuning is necessary. There's no new database administration task. It just works automatically, and customers expect to see the performance gain with no extra work. This is the same kind of work we've done in the autonomous self-driving spirit, which has guided our Exadata engineering since day one. Given this tremendous um, innovation and obviously progress that you alluded to, um, do you foresee a new class of applications opening up for Exadata? That's a great question. That's a really great question. And absolutely, persistent memory opens up new opportunities for our customers. The huge capacity and the performance improvement makes it extremely cost effective to run multi-terabyte databases, and that too with tremendously fast response times. Now, instead of sampling a data set for real-time analytics, customers can run their analytics against the entire data set. With faster analytics, fraud detection gets more accurate and faster network intrusion detection can be done. The possibilities are just absolutely endless here in terms of what we can do. And also, on the latency spectrum, the advantages that Intel persistent memory brings to Exadata are exciting. For a lot of our customers, speed of execution matters a lot. Every microsecond counts. And every microsecond that we save per database transaction helps our customers to do more with the system, and in turn serve their end users faster. Applications such as high-speed IoT processing, high-frequency trading, AI, ML-based predictive modeling are just some of the examples of very relevant use cases. These have wide applicability in verticals like finance, utility, transportation, healthcom, and telecom, and public sector. We see our customers benefiting a lot with Intel persistent memory technology. And from an R&D standpoint, we'll continue to invest heavily in this area. And of course, I'm very excited that we'll continue this research and partner with your R&D team as we make this journey. Thank you, Cody. Thank you for joining us this Thank morning. You. You've heard from Cody. And now I'd like to invite Shashank Shavan, Oracle's Vice President of In-Memory Technologies, to provide a peek at one of Oracle's key applications. Good morning, Shashank. Good morning. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Shashank Chivan, and my colleague, Weiwei Gong, and I are part of the development team 
at Oracle responsible for developing the Oracle Database in Memory product. Today we're going to show you a live demo of Database in Memory running on Intel's Optane DC persistent memory, which we'll call Optane DIMMs going forward. What we intend to convey to you in this demo is a simple yet astounding message. More memory translates to faster performance. Now before we begin this demo, let me tell you a little bit more about what database in memory is. Real-time enterprises these days need to be data-driven, agile, and, and efficient. They need to react rapidly to changing business data and make important decisions in fractions of a second. Banks, for example, need real-time analytics for implementing fraud detection. Manufacturing builds data warehouses to analyze data and assess operational efficiency in real time. The Oracle database and memory feature of the RDBMS enables customers to run analytic queries at billions of rows per second, providing immediate intelligence for enterprise-grade applications. With database and memory, actionable insights from data can be extracted in real time, and the right decisions can be made instantly. So how do we do it? How do we accelerate analytic queries to deliver real-time intelligence? Well, we start with how the data is stored. Traditionally, data gets stored as rows on persistent storage like disk or flash. Rows are great for transactional processing, but not for analytics. So the first step is to transpose rows into columns. This enables us to read only that data which is absolutely needed by the query. Next, we want to store this data directly in memory to avoid the I.O. overhead seen in persistent storage today. DRAM is several orders of magnitude faster than persistent store, but is significantly smaller in space. So we compress the columnar representation using highly optimized and compressed data formats, and then we store it in memory. Now the last step is where we have the most fun. The algorithms in our SQL execution operators process the data in vectors using SIMD instructions, such as those provided by Intel processors, to achieve billions of rows per second throughput. And with that, analytics can run at or beyond memory bandwidth speeds and fully utilize the CPU cores. So what type of analytics SQL operators can be accelerated with database and memory? Here are a few that are worth mentioning. Scans and filters are used to go through rows and select those which pass, select rows which pass a predicate. Joins are used to match rows from one table with those from another based on a join predicate. And aggregations are used to sort passing rows and aggregate them into groups. Database and memory is not just limited to analytics, however. Database and memory is designed as a dual format architecture in that we maintain both row and column formats for your tables. This architecture allows us to improve mixed workloads as well as analytics. Transaction processing continues to benefit with the existing row format, while analytic queries benefit with the in-memory columnar formats. Both are simultaneously active and consistent. Database and memory is natively built into the Oracle RDMMS, which means we can seamlessly leverage over 40 plus years of Oracle technology, such as scale out with rack or backup and recovery with data guard. Also, no application changes are needed to leverage database and memory, making it super easy to adopt. And lastly, Database and memory was designed from day one to not require all of your data to be in memory. Query execution automatically falls back to the row store on disk or flash for any data not found in memory. This is extremely important because many customers have working sets in the terabytes which very well may exceed available memory capacity. So, although database and memory was designed and optimized from day one to accelerate analytic workloads of any size, performance can reduce quite a bit if the workload's working set is not entirely kept in the in-memory column store. So this brings us to Intel's Optane DIMMs. 
Intel's persistent memory technology enables customers to have a significantly larger column store, and that equates to higher performance with a simple message, more memory, faster performance. And with memory mode setting enabled with Optane DIMMs, latency-sensitive queries see negligible performance degradation, since the hottest data accesses come from the DRAM cache sitting in front of the Optane DIMMs. Optane DIMMs with memory mode is supported seamlessly with database and memory. Absolutely no changes required. All right, it's demo time. We're ready to show you a live demo which will clearly illustrate the benefit of database and memory with a larger column store using Optane DIMMs. Weiwei, please take us to the database screen, the de demo screen. OK. On the left window pane, we have instance one, which has 384 gigabytes of DRAM memory and very fast NVMe drives. On the larger right window pane, we have instance two, which has 1.5 terabytes of memory using Optane DIMMs running in memory mode. On both instances, we are running a data warehouse where the largest table in the database exceeds 18 billion rows. Now, instance one, on the left pane can hold at most 70% of the data warehouse workload. On the other hand, instance two with Optane DIMMs can hold the entire workload. Each instance will execute the same real world business analytic query, which is heavy on table join processing. Okay, wait, wait, when you're ready, let's start both runs. Okay, is the demo showing here? There we go, okay, we already started the demo, but the screen didn't show up. So my lines change a little bit. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, the, the yellow progress circle has indicated that the query has already completed on instance two, okay? On instance one with DRAM, it's still chugging along. Okay, and what we projected here, we see this 10x faster, we're projecting that based at the rate at which rows are currently being processed. Okay, so 18 billion rows processed in 12 seconds. Okay, um, we're gonna let the DRAM test continue to run while we switch back to the presentation slides. Okay, so now that we showed how more memory translates into faster performance with Oracle's database and memory product, let's take it to the next level by upgrading our database to the upcoming Oracle 20C release. In 20C, we built a new execution framework in database and memory from the ground up called deep vectorization. This framework allows vector processing to extend to all SQL operators, including those complicated analytic ones we discussed earlier. Wait, wait, let's, plant, let's please switch to the demo screen. Okay. On the far right now, we will execute the same query on the same database sitting in instance two with the Optane DIMMs. Okay, uh, wait, wait. when you're ready, let's start. Seems like we have a little bit of a technical difficulty here. And cross your fingers, yes. Okay, this is a real demo, <laughs> okay? This is, this is like absolutely real. We take a risk in trying it, but you see the performance on the screen. So on Oracle 20C running with memory mode, we're able to get 18 billion rows in three seconds, okay? In three seconds. That's over 40x faster than the DRAM case, okay? 4x faster than just running with the Optane DIMMs with the previous version of Oracle, Oracle 20C, immediately 4x faster, total gains of 40x. Okay, so to conclude, the combination of larger memory capacity achieved through Intel's Optane DIMMs plus the additional performance delivered with database and memory's new deep vectorization framework has the potential to improve performance by 40x or more. Oracle DB customers can transparently increase their memory capacity using Intel processors and Intel's Optane DIMMs without requiring application changes. I want to thank Kit for giving me an opportunity to present Oracle's database and memory product to you all, and also thank Weiwei and the in-memory database development team and the on-site Intel engineers in the back here who helped us put this demo together, and thank you very much. Thank you, Shashang. Thank you. And thank you, Weiwei.
hopefully we didn't steal too much of Larry's thunder this afternoon. Thank you again for that impressive demo. Um, that was a live demo in case you guys were wondering. Um, it gets us a little bit nervous when we're doing something live uh, on the spot. With this, we conclude our session. I hope you found it informative. Uh, it gives you a sneak peek of what's to come.